All right, our, our first trap across the creek here, and this is one where we put a pine cone in it. So obviously the pine cone is still there, okay? Marshmallow is still in there. So that worked. What I am gonna do is uh, scrape off some fish scales or a piece of fish and put in there and give this some extra smell and see if how to get me a coon to come over here. All right, we're gonna get that done and go to the next. All right, used my handy dandy Leatherman to cut me off a fish tail here. Now we're gonna see. Now the question is, I believe, so this is, this is gonna smell. I'm not questioning if it's gonna smell or not. So we're gonna put that down in there. Okay. My question is, I'm gonna put our pine cone on there. My question is, when that coon comes along to grab that fishtail, that fishtail is not up under the trigger. The marshmallow is on the trigger. So he is gonna be able to grab that fishtail and then leave. So my question is, once he has the fish, is he gonna stick around for dessert? Yeah, of course he will. Of course he will. You have a nice, fish snack then you would certainly want to have a sweet marshmallow right behind that right right on to the next all right checking our other cody set out here looks like come up empty again the disappointment okay that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna put fish on this one too fish is different I ain't baited none of these with fish before so if a critter comes through here and smells the fish I think he's gonna, I think they're gonna work it. My bait hole is full of water back there, so pretty sure that um that that liver scent that was in there is gone. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna get my big shovel or uh, spade digging tool, and I'm gonna make a bigger dirt hole back here, make it more obvious, make it pop a little bit. I'm gonna cover my pan back up, that rain. The heavy rain that we got washed uh, my pan off so it is exposed and we'll go from there i'll bring y'all back and show y'all uh the finished product but we're gonna get this covered back up we're gonna make this hole bigger put a fish in it and i think it's gonna get us get us something it's gotta get us something so we'll see bring y'all back when it's done all right guys finished product we got it refreshed i got the uh the pan Yeesh, there it is covered up and man my shadow is gonna be in the way let's see here yeah my shadow is gonna be in the way i got the dirt hole cleaned up a little bit made it a little more uh, a little bit more noticeable uh and uh put a fish down there and we're just trying to make it a little more noticeable. That way we can trigger that uh that coyote's uh, theft response. It's going to think that something's buried. A little snack there. And it's going to come along and try and steal it. So that's what we've done. Made a little dirt hole set. I think that's what it's called. And uh, fingers crossed. Now it's a waiting game. I mean, that fish is going to be putting out a good, a good scent. And... Like I said, it's not the normal bait that you see people using for coyotes. But, I mean, growing up, if you put out fish scraps where you clean fish, you, you're going to, I mean, we all the time had raccoons and possums and even uh, coyotes come getting those scraps. You know what I'm saying? Where we would regularly dump the fish, the, the fish bones and stuff. So, I, even though it's not normal stuff that people use to bait with i'm expecting some good results i mean 
I don't see why it, why it wouldn't work. So there we go. We got that one done, and uh, we're gonna go check out the rest of them. All right, we got we came up on our uh, DP here, and it was baitless, and it was not triggered. So I don't know exactly what happened, but we are going to uh, rebait it with some fish. I put fish floating fish bait down inside there just a little bit below the trigger and i'm going to take my handy dandy leatherman here shout out leatherman i'm not sponsored by leatherman although it would be really cool if i was i'm gonna take my handy dandy uh, leatherman here i'm gonna cut me off a fish tail and i'm going to put that fish tail down in my trap I'm gonna see if I can get the trigger on top of it here. And get the fish tail to lay below the trigger. Yeah. Oh, it smells delicious. And just to give it some extra, just because I don't want to cheat my coons, you know. I may. I'm just gonna shave him off some fish scales right here, you know. I mean, I just want it to smell fishy. Ugh, man, these, these gloves are going to be screwed. Okay. Just, just trying to get it a little bit extra in there. Ugh. There we go. Okay. Put that back in the fish bag. Poke some more of this down in here. Perfect. Wipe that off. Wipe my gloves off. Now, remember, th this is the same uh, DP that we didn't catch anything on for a long time. We put marshmallows in here. I put uh, good night. Uh, put marshmallows in here, and never caught anything off of it until I put. Uh, a marshmallow in there and then drizzled some of that fish oil that I had some of that salmon oil, uh, salmon oil on there and y'all y'all may have remembered seeing that video and after I did that I caught two raccoons right here back to back so there's something with this fishy stuff guys they, they enjoy the fishiness so we are gonna hopefully capitalize on that get this nasty bag zipped back up because let me tell y'all it stinks oh my goodness all right let's see here okay y'all see the fish down in there got little scales fins you know we're making it smell good making it look right we gotta sell it we gotta sell it gotta give it some curb appeal that's all we're doing guys we, we selling this trap to these critters right you gotta make it, you gotta entice them. You gotta make it look good. Oh man, and that fish is gonna do it. Whew. That fish is, uh, I don't know how long it had been sitting out there on the bank. It was already smelling whenever I picked it up uh, after the eagles had dropped it there. So it was already smelling. It's been frozen. Today, I told you it's gonna get up to 65. And it, the, the fish was already smelling smelling pretty good. So after it's been put up, thawed back out, 65 degrees, I mean, I can smell it. And it's back there in the back. I can smell it right now. I'm, I'm going to have to keep looking behind me and make sure I ain't got a trail of critters following me because it smells so bad. All right, let's check the next one. And I should have just kept the video rolling. I didn't even have to turn it off. Look at that. Just a few feet up from where I was at earlier. I mean, I was right down there. And that is a nice coon. Yes, sir. In this area right here, this is a, a new area where we had started hearing uh, more quail and everything. So this line right here, actually, this trap line isn't even actually that old. We started this trap line after I'd got here, and I've only been here like three three and a half months, four months. So this particular trap line ain't that old. We just started doing this because we started hearing quail over here. 
and uh some of the uh the customer and the guest said that they saw a covey of quail here so we've been really trying to hit this this line hard i told y'all we've been having success down there on that trap and I, i'm real happy about this one right here this is a good size coon and like i've said before coons will tear up your uh nesting your ground nesting birds quail they'll tear up your, your quail nest and they will tear up your turkey nest and if you got deer feeders they will even gang up on a deer and keep deer from eating at the feeder so they are a really pesky animal so happy to get him we're gonna get him taken care of and go on to the next all right guys we're at another one on the same line and uh we had i mean i'm telling you the sardines we went from using uh marshmallows exclusively in these dps to doing a, a marshmallow and a sardine mixture and before that we were using corn and fish oil and everything the fishiness fishy smell is where it's at guys for for these nest raiders uh it's definitely um uh, yeah, you, you can tell that there's a pickup in uh, critters. So that's good. That's good to know. And uh, we're going to get him taken care of. We're going to reset this. I don't have sardines with me today, but I have more of that fish. So I'm expecting the same results that the sardines and uh, the fish oil was giving me. So we're going to get him taken care of and uh, move on to the next. All right, guys. I'm down here checking out a little DP that I put in. <clears throat> a couple of days ago this is a totally new spot never trapped here before put a dp in right there Let's see if y'all can see that there it is a little dog proof set and it's right here on this creek put a marshmallow in it coon literally you see the tracks right here coon came came up worked this bank even came up here on the high bank so there's his there's his little footprint okay i mean it is right there so footprint dp i have a hard time believing that if that would have had some kind of fishiness to it that he wouldn't have put his hand down there so marshmallows i mean maybe they uh I mean, maybe they're just picky, you know. Maybe they get tired of marshmallows. I don't know. Maybe they get suspicious of marshmallows. They heard heard down the uh, the coon uh, grapevine that, hey, man, if you smell some marshmallows, don't put your hand down in there. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. But I have a hard time thinking, or a hard time believing, hard time thinking too sometimes, uh, a hard time believing that that coon that walks all the way down this bank Walked up here on this high bank. I mean, you see his footprints. Went right by that trap with a marshmallow in it. Didn't even stop to check it out. Or saw it right there. Smelled what was in it and didn't like it and kept going. So it's got some fish in there now. And we're going to see what the results are next time we come through. But a good little creek right here. I mean, I'm looking again for footprints, and I mean, so right over there looks like a either a cat or a canine print. Two of them. Let's see if I can find it on camera for y'all. Yeah. Boop, boop. If you have a creek bank on the property that you're trapping. And you ain't trapping it. I really think you're you're missing out. I really think so. Cause I mean I'm just looking at all the tracks down through here. And that really I mean that tells me that I need to put uh a canine or uh a cat set over here on this side. Let's take a walk down here because I see where they they came up. Okay, so this looks like a canine footprint right here. Okay. That's, I'm not I'm not a trapping, I mean tracking expert. So 
I think those are canines because you can see the claw claw prints, right? So let's go check these out. And if you know, if you're in the comments and you know you're real good at this stuff, tell me what to look for, okay? See if I can get down here without busting my butt, okay? So big canine prints. You can see the, the claw marks in the front. So that's a canine print. What are, what are those? Those, are, I mean, it ain't got fingers like a raccoon. A raccoon's got, you know, you can tell raccoon of the other fingers they got. But anyway, if you know how to track, you got more, more tracks right there. If you know how to track, uh, comment down below. Tell me what to look for. Give me uh, some tips, you know, on how I can learn to be a better tr uh, track identifier. And my tip to you is if there is a creek or even a ditch, it could be a dry, a dry creek, even a ditch on the property that you're working, you should be trapping it. Because critters are using these ditches for travel ways, coming down here to get something to drink. Definitely be trapping these creeks, guys. All right, guys, just checking out the creek here. And I don't have no traps on this creek either. This, uh, I mean, well, this is the same creek, but <clears throat> further down. And I don't have no traps on this side either. I only have a certain amount of traps. So I would love to be able to put some sets over here because, I mean, I'm just seeing plenty of big raccoon tracks. And see, uh, yeah. See all those right there? Those are big raccoon tracks. And this this part I've been I've been trying to make a video to say this a couple of times and the words just didn't come out right. But I'm gonna try and do it again. If you are in land management, land wildlife management type job, trapping, and you are getting in a rush, like today I got I gotta I gotta check these feeders check these traps check this piece of property go check this fence if you get into a checklist mentality you're going to miss a lot okay i've missed a lot because that's how that was the mentality that i started with when i got this job you know because i want to be busy 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 um checking this stuff out i mean uh getting stuff done you know i, I got into a, a checklist mentality but doing that you are doing a big disservice to your customer because you're missing a bunch of stuff. Get off the cart, whatever vehicle that you're traveling with, get off, take time to walk around and observe, okay? More, more coon tracks, big coon tracks. It is our job as managers and trappers to know what's coming through the property right so cameras help a lot cameras help a lot get your cameras cameras are a major major tool to have but you can't have a camera on every maybe you can i mean your budget might allow it uh, but i don't have a camera on every corner of this property, right? Or other properties. So I'm having to get off the cart, take my time to notice things, to see things, to check things out, to see what's moving through the area so I can better uh, serve, serve the customer and give him results that he's wanting, right? So I'm down here again, looking at uh, this creek bed. So we just had a ton of rain. Got more coon tracks, just a bunch of coon tracks working this creek. We just had a bunch of rain and normally this creek and all the creeks around here are extremely dry, right? So I don't really have, I haven't really been able to see the property in this kind of condition to where there's fresh sand, fresh mud everywhere, right? The creeks are norm normally bone dry. And you, I mean, you wouldn't believe it, but they're normally bone dry. And uh, so 
so I don't get the opportunity to see it. Ah, man, just got some briars Woof, across the stomach. Good gracious. That's what they call brand new briars. This is brand new. That hurt. Anyways, I don't get the opportunity to see sign like this because it's normally not in this condition. I mean, you just got tracks going all along the way, right? And I wouldn't have been able to see that if everything was dry like it has been for months. So the point I'm getting at is slow down. Don't have that checklist mentality of I got to do this, this, and this, and this. It's good to be organized. It's good to stay busy. But if you never get off the cart and you're just going from point A to point B, rushing through everything, you're going to miss a lot. You're going to be a disservice, be doing a disservice to your customer. And the other point I wanted to make was take advantage of the weather changes. Rain. Like I said, I haven't been able to see this property, you know, after it's rained like this. So I'm seeing a ton of sign that I would have missed or wouldn't have been able to see at all. And I have a better idea of where I need to put my traps. So that's all that I wanted to say. It turned out a lot longer than what I wanted it to be. But just slow down, be observant, pay attention to what's around you. guys we're coming up on the last uh, new coyote set that I put out and it would just it would really make my day if I had something up here this set is on a high bank so it should not have been affected by any of the water issues that all of my other sets had you know yeah checking checking the tracks seeing what's in the area take a look I was really really hoping to have something over here guys like I said we're on a high ridge so water wouldn't affect it wouldn't have affected anything I'm gonna go out here and see see if anything has come by to visit okay so, I'm looking for tracks, and that right there is a track. That right there is our, our pen. Now, I don't know if the pan was uncovered when, <clears throat> I can't tell what that is. It, it may be a canine track, coyote track. I'm not sure. Ah, man. Okay. But, not a total loss because the trap didn't get. We just spooked something in these, in the woods back here behind us. I don't know what it was. Ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. Made a racket though. I don't know. Okay. Back to what I was saying. So the pan, the trap, did not get triggered. So in my mind, the trap is undiscovered. Okay. So we had something come by to visit. Obviously. Okay. We got the, got the track right there to prove it. How much it hung around, I don't know. But we're going to get that, that covered back up. And that's kind of blended in. I mean, it's not standing out that much. So I'm going to get it covered up, dressed up right. I'm going to put, dig out my, my, my dirt hole again. 
my trench set. I'm gonna dig this, this out again, make it look fresh like something come through here. And I'm gonna put a piece of fish down there. And we're gonna see. Like I said, it's not total rejection because so, <laughs> something came by. So again, we still have a chance. If you come by to check out my set, that's that means I got a chance. I'm doing something a little bit right. So we're gonna try to dress it back up and I'm gonna put, so that was liver. I put liver and sardine juice, you know, I have a can on that. So that was one scent, okay? I'm about to put a fish down there. So that's gonna be a different scent that hopefully pulls him back. So I'll show y'all the finished product when I get done. All right, y'all. A uh, couple points I wanted to talk about or think out loud about while I'm here that may be causing that may cause a problem in the future. I don't think. Sorry, keep. <laughs> I, I swear I keep uh, hearing something running through the woods back here. Um, like I said, we do have a wild dog problem. So, have to keep a lookout, you know. Anyway, but something that I wanted to point out, to think through here with y'all. Since we've had all of this rain, all the, and we're in clay soil, right? I don't know if all this rain and turning the, the topsoil and stuff into just hard mud clay is going to affect the function of my trap i i don't know and i wouldn't know unless one i set it off myself which i don't want to do because i don't want to disturb the set more than what i have to and the other way that i would know is if there was a camera here watching it and i could see where the the critter was stepping so that's one one problem. The mud may cause an issue with my set or with uh, the trap itself. And then the other problem might be that my dirt hole is not deep enough. So you can see my bait there. I put a little fish down in there and I packed it in there to try and make it a little more difficult uh, for a critter to get it out. With, uh, with a coyote, he ain't gonna be able to like reach in there and grab it. You know, he's gonna have to work for it. A cat's gonna have to work for it. But um, I don't want, I want to limit the possibilities of a raccoon coming or a possum coming and grabbing it out of the hole and messing up the whole thing. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, that's fine to catch those, but I would prefer for the sets that I'm making specifically for bobcats and for coyotes, catch one of those instead of just a raccoon we have plenty of other sets for uh the nest raiders so one issue i may run into that i'll find out with this is if my dirt hole is not dug far enough back right i don't know let's see here yeah so if my dirt hole ain't dug far enough back now on youtube you see a lot of the people using a little shovel that can really really dig out a spot right so really dig out a spot or they're using a drill with an auger bit auger bit i don't think is going to work very well in this clay so that doesn't matter but generally they try and go down like eight or ten inches right and i'm not i'm not there you know that may be six inches that I've been able to to dig into okay so that may be an issue there that my dirt hole isn't deep enough and that the mud is gonna mess up the the traps uh, performance so that's something that we're gonna have to see and other I wouldn't be able to see see unless I had a camera here you know but we're gonna we're gonna find out and it's a learning process, guys. It's a learning process. Uh, I mean, that's, what, that's what we're out here doing. We're learning every day with every set, with every experience with these critters. We're learning something new. Another thing I wanted to point out, again, is 
you don't have to have a whole lot to start. There may be other more efficient tools to use, like what we were just discussing, you know, being able to, to make your bait hole further and take it further into the ground. But the, I mean, this is the, the bare minimum and you could be trapping. You got your trap, you got a, a tool hammer to dig your set out to bed, to bed your trap. You got a little scooper here to put your dirt on top of your trap, you know? And I was using this uh, the other day to make my, my uh, bait hole, but I'm not sure that this was making making the set seen enough. It wasn't making, it, it wasn't able to do that, you know, but I do, I do use this. Again, just pointing out that you don't have to have a ton of stuff to get out there and start trapping if you, if you want to try it out and uh, see if you can get to these critters on your own or see if you can start trapping for somebody else, you know. So there we go, guys. There we go. And earlier I said that this track right here was a canine. Again, if you know, if you are a, a tr track expert, Tell me what that is. That may just be a, a raccoon. I'm not sure. The longer I look at it, I'm kind of leaning towards a raccoon. Not sure. Not really sure. All right. Uh, that is the last canine and bobcat set that I have on this side of the property. We're going to finish checking traps. We got a few more to get on this side of the creek. And then we're going to go to another part of the property where I have the original line of bobcat traps where I caught all three of those bobcats. And fingers crossed, uh, I have another one there today after it left me that little present yesterday. All right, we're gonna move on to the next. All right, guys. We're gonna be rolling up on uh, that bobcat set. And we're gonna find out together again if we've done anything. fired off. Fish is still there. Alright, so we got these over here that we got to check. <sighs> Swing and a miss. Guys, I was positive. I got my camera set up on that one too. So I'll review that. I'll review that and uh whoa, where'd y'all go? Y'all still there? I'll review that and see if uh if anything came by. But I'm totally shocked. Totally shocked. I got one more little set up here that I'm gonna try. This one I wasn't. I was expecting those two to be the, the big winners. Yeah. Got some mud right here, just checking my tracks. All deer tracks. We got one more right here. We're gonna take a look at nothing. My cage. Nothing, nothing, nothing. This was round two. Round one went to the bobcat. Round two, unfortunately, goes to the bobcat. Only been one night. Only been one night. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna do anything to the set. I'm gonna leave it all as is. And I'm gonna do as they say, let the set work. Let it work and, and see what happens. But man, I would have bet you money that I was going to come in to a bobcat in one of those traps, if not both of them. I really thought I was going to have a cat right there, guys. 
man. Man, man, man. Well, that's the original. That's the cubby set. Camera on it. We'll find out if anything came through. Matter of fact, we're gonna stop and check check for tracks right now while I got y'all here. I'm not seeing anything stand that stands out. The fish is still there. I'm not seeing where a cat has been here or anything. Fish is still there. Let's walk down here real quick. And again, we're gonna check the check the cameras to see if anything came by. But I would have bet you money that when I came here today, I was gonna have a cat. Would have bet you money. There's the old gift that he left me yesterday. I don't see nothing new. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, man. I ain't gonna try and hide my disappointment, okay? I'm gonna let y'all know I'm disappointed. Tomorrow is a new day. We will try again until we get these cats, guys. All right, that's probably going to wrap it up for me. This video is already going to be like 30 minutes long. So I will catch y'all next time. Uh, hopefully we'll have a cat in one of these sets. Y'all be good.